In today's video, we're going to be talking about the rule of thirds, particularly in respect to landscape photography. Now, I think it's a little bit overrated, but it is one of those composition rules that you need to know, and it will really improve your photos. The reason I say it's overrated is I think if you look at some of the truly great photos, or even paintings for that matter, you won't see a remarkable one that's just based on the rule of thirds. There's always something else in the photo or in the, in the artwork. And I'll let you know what that little tip is in just a minute. Welcome to Nifty 50 Photographers. If you're new to this channel, I'm Richard Gill. I'm a professional photographer. And on here, I provide free photography tutorials. So what is the rule of thirds? Put very simply, you divide your frame up horizontally with two lines, each one a third of the way up. So a third away up from the bottom, then another third up, which is two thirds of the way up from the bottom. And you do the same vertically. One a third of the way in, the next one two thirds of the way in. So you've now split your frame into thirds. And what you're trying to do is put your key point of interest on where those lines intersect. Now you can do this in both a landscape format and in a portrait format. We're going to a beautiful location today, one of my favorite place, places in the lakes to take photos, because it has so many compositional things that you can use to make a lovely photo. And we're photographing in the golden hour. Uh, so that's the hour around sunset. So the light is lovely and you get some beautiful colors. Uh, that's why it's called the golden hour. And we're going to a little place called Wyzine Tarn, uh, which is not very far from Beatrix Potter's house. And we'll actually go by a little tarn that Beatrix Potter owned on our walk up there. It's one of my favorite places in the lakes for taking photos. I think it's a really photogenic location. So. But we're not very far from Hawkshead, in fact, and be a nice spot to get some lovely uh, landscape photos. So first of all, let's, we're just about to come across Moss Eccles Tarn. This tarn was bought by Beatrix Potter, and she used to come up here with uh, her husband, William Healis, and it was a favorite place for them to spend time in the evenings, and they kept the boat here and planted one red water lily and one white water lily in the shallow waters. As you can see, I've got my trusty four-legged companion with me, Obi. is just to have a little walk around and suss out where I'm uh, going to take my photo from. Now, I want to catch, obviously, the sun setting over the hills there, but I'm really looking for some foreground interest to make the photo more interesting. And I think what I'll do is perhaps use uh, these rocks to create that. So I'll set my camera up somewhere here that should capture the sun going down over the fells and uh, hopefully we'll get some nice sunset shots. I've set my camera up in what I think is a great location to take my photo. Now uh, there's a number of things going on here. So I first, I put that horizon in the top third because um, I think the foreground and the middle ground are more interesting than the sky and I've put a um, point of interest, which for me is the sun, which is just descending on one of those uh, third lines. And it's going to end up, when I do my final framing, uh, right on the intersection as well. Um, I'm hoping it's going to just peep out from behind the clouds as it, uh, as it descends. I've got my camera angled slightly downwards. If you remember in my video on foreground, middle ground and background, and I'll put a link to that here if you haven't seen it. 
that tilting your camera down just brings in a little bit more foreground sometimes and that makes your picture more interesting. Now I did say there is one killer point about using the rule of thirds to bring your photos to that other level and that is to use other compositional rules with it. I think it is a good idea to do things like put your horizon a third of the way down. If you've got a really interesting sky you might flip that the other way so you have a third of your image is um, just land and two thirds is sky. Let me show you what I mean. So we could set a picture up like that if we wanted to encapture more sky. What you generally want to avoid is doing something like that where it's half and half because that tends to make the photo a bit less interesting. So let me reframe that to where I was and talk about some of the other things I've got going on. Now I don't know whether you can see but there is this little uh, stream here that's running into the uh, tarn and that is leading our eyes into the tarn. Now the other thing to remember is your eye is always drawn to the brightest part of the scene and we can set that whole thing up now so what we've got is our stream it leads to the tarn and that has a nice arabesque curve that leads back to the sun where you're getting these beautiful rays of sunshine just breaking through the clouds and you've got these hills uh, over here in the distance. So I'm going to take my photo now uh, and then I'll repeat it in a portrait format because uh, I think that'll also work well for this scene. And remember, often you might want to use your photos in a portrait format as well. I'm hoping the back of the display is nice and clear for you here so you can see uh, what's going on. Um, I've got a 60th F10 and I'm slightly under exposing it. And that's because uh, when I come to look at my histogram, I want to make sure that there's nothing uh, blown there. And that looks to be pretty good, so I'm going to take my shot. I've put a two second delay, I've got the camera on a tripod, and uh, there's my finished shot. I think I'm going to take one actually a little bit more underexposed, um, because I think the sky is probably going to be a bit blown, and the sun is now just coming out from behind the cloud. So let me increase my shutter speed, I've got my ISO at 100. I'm going to increase my shutter speed and you can see the colour um, developing in the sky there. And now I'm going to repeat the same exercise with the ND filter on. Um, you don't need to worry about that, I'll cover that in a later photo, but it'll help to bring out some more of the colours in the sky. What it does is give a longer exposure. So it's just screwing on the ND filter there. And what I'm going to have to do now is, is dramatically slow down my shutter. So I'm probably going to end up somewhere around half a second, I think. That looks uh, as if it's about right. So maybe even a wee bit longer, I think. Yeah, the histogram looks good. So there we go. I've now reset up my shot with the uh, camera in a portrait mode and uh, what I've had to do is zoom in a little bit um, but I wanted to get the, the rocks in the foreground and use this little bit of stream here uh, again to lead me into the photo. And I've, again I've positioned the sun so up here um, it's round about one of the intersections uh, of the lines of thirds. So that's really how you can use your line of thirds um, to make a, a portrait shot, or, sorry, to make a portrait landscape uh, type photo. What I might do is end up cropping this to four by five. That's the kind of format that works well on Instagram. So I'm gonna take this shot, just adjust my exposure uh, a wee bit. Uh, I've still got my ND filter on, it's just quicker. Um, not to change it over but the process is is still the same 
So I'm just checking my histogram hasn't blown at all. And I think that looks all right. It looks a bit cramped up that end. So I might just uh, over under expose it a tiny bit more because I can always bring up the darkness when I uh, get into post processing. And the other thing I should do is I'm focusing about a third of the way into the scene. And there's my new shot. And you can see this is why it's such a gorgeous location, especially now with the sun just going down. And I'll probably hang on here just for a few minutes and uh, see what other photos we can get. I'm just seeing some mist just forming over the hills right in the background, right up here. I'll try and film it on my other camera and then you can, you can see that as well. So the mist is just starting to form in the valleys of these mountains in the distance. Um, it's looking absolutely beautiful out there. The sun's just breaking through from behind the clouds as well. And this is why you've got to love being uh, able to get out into these landscapes. Let me take a few more shots now and see how they come out. So there's one other little compositional technique that I'll share with you. When you're photographing something like the sun, if you want to get that kind of starburst ray effect, make sure you choose a very narrow aperture. I would usually say something like f13 or even smaller. I'm uh, going to shoot this one at f14. So I really hope you've enjoyed seeing this beautiful scenery in the Lake District and learning a little bit about the rule of thirds and how you can use it in photography, composition in landscapes. But I would say to you, one of the other things is make sure you get to learn many of the other rules of composition because it's really a combination of the rule of thirds with some of the other things that will really make your photos come to life. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, uh, please make sure you do give it a like and come back and join us next, next time. Make sure you know when that will be by subscribing to the channel and hitting that little notification bell. We do have a Nifty 50 Photographers Facebook group, which you're welcome to join. Um, there is a link in the description. Come back and see us next time when we'll be giving you more great tips on how to take some better photos. I'm off home now for a warm hot chocolate.